Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at the 2022 Oklahoma OER Summit. My name is Tracy Romano, and I will be your moderator. Welcome to the session titled Teaching with Pressbooks with Jason Proctor, Assistant Professor in Teacher Education at Northeastern State University. Welcome, Jason. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining uh, me this afternoon to talk a little bit about uh, my experience with open educational resources and kind of my goal over the next 20 minutes or so is to uh, give you a little bit of background on how I got into uh, OER and kind of my process to get started and then how it has evolved over the last uh, two to three years. Um, so as Tracy said, I am here in the College of Education at Northeastern State University, and um, I was hired in about four years ago. And with that process, I um, was handed a few brand new courses, uh, to me anyway. And with that, I knew that I had a big uh, task ahead when it came to planning and the direction of those courses. Um, and so uh, I kind of want to start with just sharing you a little insight into um, my approach to planning and how that led me to open educational resources. So I'm going to share my screen here uh, real quick. And um, so the course I'm really going to direct you uh, into my insight here is this teaching methods course that I was given a few years ago. And uh, when I started putting it together, I started similar to many of you uh, looking at kind of our program goals and our course objectives, and then really digging into uh, what were my module level goals um, going to be and how did they connect to my course objectives. And so to make sure all all my course was aligned with uh, the activities I was doing. And so over the first two years, I, I really narrowed in on exactly what that was going to be based upon the needs of our students, which came up, which brought me to a point where I started to struggle with the textbook question. Uh, because when I started digging into this particular course, um, when it comes to, to teaching methods, I, I had all kinds of resources that I was asking my students to go look for. And I had now the problem of do, how many textbooks do I have them purchase? Because um, it was really hard to now go find textbooks that dealt with planning and textbooks that dealt with assessment and textbooks that did with uh, classroom management. And so I had a problem of finding one textbook that did it all well, and then that did it in a way that um, actually engaged my students with the content. Um, the textbook we were using was rather large, and uh, I'm sure many of you have had similar experiences where your students may or may not actually purchase the book, and then the question is whether or not they actually use it. Um, and so I was finding this was being very uh, much underused. So I decided to uh, venture into the world of open educational resource because I wanted to create a text that went right along with the goals of my course. Um, so I was a little familiar with uh, how open educational resources worked and I knew there had to be some people out there um, sharing information about these learning objectives that I was uh, aiming for. And so, I started digging around and what I did was I started just really small. And so I started just with a, a Google document. And um, if I wanted to share some information with my students about a certain topic, I just basically write a small chapter and include some resources. And um, so I, I started making really small chapters, which then grew after a couple semesters into my first OER, which was this textbook that I put together for the class. And uh, I left it in a Google document for a few years. And over time, I started uh, looking for other resources that were 
using the same thing. And one of my one of my best tips for finding open educational resources or pieces to use to build up my resource. Uh, let me see if I can give you an example. Um, so this chapter I wrote about assessment. And what I started doing is I recognized, hey, there were other people out there writing and marking their work with Creative Commons um, information. And so I started searching using whichever search engine um, I could find. Uh, I'd look for my topic that I was looking for and I'd either tag it with Creative Commons or um, I would start looking for, uh, let's see, this one might have a, what I started recognizing is that Pressbooks was a very commonly used OER uh, source. And so I'd look for my topic in the search engine and then I just tag it with Pressbooks. And then I'd pull up all these different Pressbooks uh, options um, from these different resources. And so I started attributing to certain sections that gave me permission to use their work. And then I just build almost half my chapter that way. But what I was able to do uh, using OER was I could create a textbook now that um, allowed me to organize it exactly the way my course flowed. And it would only have the information that was in my course. And so students wouldn't be buying a textbook and only have to use a portion of it. The whole thing um, allowed for direct alignment with the course. And another thing I, I did, and I utilized the Google tools here, is I left my document open with commenting features. So like in this section, um, I wanted my students to not only just engage with the content, but to engage with each other. So I, was, I would encourage them to participate and ask questions um, and to share other resources, uh, mainly because I wanted it to be a place uh, to extend our learning, um, to extend the classroom. The other part that I was really looking forward to with OER was to get away from just the static page um, and to provide more opportunities for my students to have choices in how to navigate through the uh, content. And so I started looking for other resources. And so I'd spend time creating um, and curating uh, resources that allowed my students to dig into the concepts in, in deeper ways. And so I would go through and link um, different videos, uh, links to blog posts, uh, links to visuals, um, links to podcasts, uh, anything that would take my students out and they could see it applied in a different realm. And it would give them choices in how to digest that content and that information. So really providing some uh, uh, opportunities to change there. So as I said, I used this format in Google Slides for a few years. Um, uh, that first, my first year, I just started building a couple chapters. The second year, I put together the main framework of this one, and I used it the third year. And then uh, this being my fourth year, uh, I knew I wanted to take this to a new level. Um, this was a great starting point for me, and it worked really well. But I. I felt like we could go somewhere else and I wanted to kind of do some revisions. And so uh, working um, through with Brad's team here, uh, I applied for one of the OCO uh, grants uh, to take and modify this um, OER here that I created in the Google document and bring it over to the Pressbooks platform. And so this is now the version of the textbook that I use. So this is my second edition, if you will. And uh, my students have found this one to be um, more easily to navigate using the um, built-in uh, table of contents. Um, and so I've been able to update it, add some new resources and um, 
a couple of the features that I really like about it uh, have been the way that I've been able to engage students in the content. Uh, so, for example, in the in the textbook, the, the Pressbooks platform allows me to embed um, self checks. So I, I couldn't do that easily in the Google forms, uh, in the Google uh, document, but here I can embed things and students can go right in and, and check their answer and get some immediate feedback right away. Uh, so these elements, interactive elements within the uh, Pressbooks tool, it took the um, experience up a level. It also allowed me to embed videos right within and so it didn't have to take my students out to another screen or another window so that they could watch videos. Um, it also provided opportunities for students to kind of summarize and then kind of check um, themselves based upon what they're reading. Uh, but one of the best features is just the way that I've been able to enhance the way that my students interact with each other uh, while they use this tool. As I had stated before, I left the commenting features open on my Google document, and some students would take advantage of that and others wouldn't. Um, but what I've done here with Pressbooks is I've tried to leverage the hypothesis tool, uh, which is part of the Pressbooks platform. And so if you've never seen hypothesis before, it's an annotation tool which allows students to go in and they can highlight. Um, so you can see I have students here highlighting throughout the text and they can uh, leave a thought, a comment, they can ask questions, um, I can reply to them, they can reply to each other. And the cool thing is um, there are students that play in the public realm where anybody who can come to this book, uh, they can sign in and um, uh, they can now have a conversation about what's going on here. But I also, I created a closed group that's just for my class. And so we can have uh, specific discussions in there and they can interact with each other um, that way. And what I found is this tool, uh, having them discuss within the uh, text as we go through it, um, has been a richer experience than if I were to use the traditional discussion board platform. Um, so I've tried the discussion board and it's, uh, my students tell me all the time that they're not fans of it. And they recognize the, the same things that we do as instructors where it, the prompts are either difficult to answer or they're not the best prompts or responding to somebody else is really hard because they didn't really say much in theirs. And so it's hard to go beyond this shallow response. Um, but what I found here in using the hypothesis is I've come at it a different way. And I started the semester and I said, okay, let's try something and let's not do the traditional discussion board, but let's commit to annotating throughout the chapters as we're reading it. And so this is, um, as they're doing that, I encourage them, uh, I keep it pretty open and just ask them to uh, create three actions, which um, actually I can show you here. It's at the beginning of my book. Um, there, I, I can show them how to annotate, but then the expectations I ask them to do is at least three times throughout your reading, um, I want you to engage with it somehow. And so you can either ask a question, you can give a comment, uh, you can answer someone's question, or you can give us some added outside source that makes us think more. So the big piece is, are they pushing our question forward? And, um, and so that has, uh, that has really elevated the level of interaction within my classroom, uh, especially outside of face-to-face -face meetings, because uh, my students are engaged in conversation about the content 
uh, throughout the week. And um, when I went and I looked up a little bit of the research, the literature on uh, annotation, uh, two things stuck out. One is that over the course of the semester, they have seen evidence of uh, the depth of student interactions and the quantity of them increase. And I can say halfway through the semester so far that mine seem to be trending that way. And then the second thing is that uh, it just increases student engagement with the content. And I can, from my experience so far, I feel like I now know that my students are at least engaged in reading the text, or at least reading parts of it and having to engage a minimum of three times with their peers. Whereas before, I didn't always, I wasn't always confident that they were going in and seeing the text. Uh, but now I can go into the, the analytics portion of Pressbooks and I can actually, like, so here's the, the platform. I can go to the dashboard and check my analytics and I can see uh, who's been using it, how often um, it's been used, and um, when's the high point, uh, how are, where are the, where are students playing? And I can see that my students are in there, um, which is much different than uh, when all I had was a, a paper textbook. Um, I was never sure if they were totally in. So um, I will say another thing I'll add in just as a side note about this hypothesis tool, uh, it works outside of the Pressbooks platform. So if you go explore this one, um, which I have this semester, I've used it in other classes that I don't have a, a Pressbooks textbook associated with it. And I've just had students sign up for an account and we've gone and had a discussion on a, on a web page uh, exploring some topic. And uh, you can have your students annotating pretty much on any web page um, out there. And you will now have access to this conversation, which you can host anywhere. So that has kind of been a fun find for me this semester and an interesting way to engage students uh, with content and their peers. So um, checking my time here, I got a little over five minutes. Um, so with the last couple minutes here, I kind of wanted to open the floor and just ask if there are any questions about how I'm using Pressbooks or the hypothesis tool or just OER in general that I'd be happy to answer. Jason, did you find that the Pressbooks platform gave you enough direction? I mean, were, were the instructions thorough enough that you felt pretty easy going through all the steps? I really did. I, I found um, there were a few places uh, where it was, uh, particularly when you're making those interactive parts, um, that for the most part, they were pretty user-friendly to create. Um, but there was always a help menu for me to go see how could you set this up. So there were always examples there. Um, but as far as just building the content, um, so I had my Google Doc pretty much set. It didn't take long at all to create the chapters because I could copy that and just paste it in. And then all I had to do were add, um, so I put my videos in or I put those interactive components in. And then it was just making it look pretty. So it was putting tables in, and but it was a pretty user-friendly platform to play with and, and one that I, I think most people with a little bit of time um, could be successful um, working with. I have a question. Yeah. Did, did you find yourself using more original text than maybe OER text when you were writing in the Google Sheets? Or, and then when you moved over to Press, did you start, Pressbooks, did you start using more um, readily available text that was out there? Did that- I would say, that? yeah. 
I would say I'm probably 50, 50 at this point. Um, if I can't, I definitely will spend some time up front to go see if anyone has created something and they're, they have made it available. And then I will adapt that. Uh, that's my go-to. And then if I can't find what I need, then I end up writing myself. Um, but pretty much from the beginning, it's been about 50-50 for me. I see I have a question about what LMS I'm using. Uh, right now, we're using Blackboard here at NSU. And uh, one thing I will mention about the hypothesis tool, uh, it does integrate with LMS, the, the common, the big name LMS tools. Um, I'm, I know I've reached out here to see if we can't figure out how to maybe get it to work with our Blackboard. Uh, that way, right now I go in and I have to tabulate in, but apparently with an LTI, it will connect to your LMS and it will track your students' contributions in LMS for you, which I think could be helpful. Are there any other questions? Uh, did I post the right link, Jason? I put the Hypothesis web website. Yes. To make yep, I think that's it. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jason. That was a fantastic presentation. Yeah. Well, if I could be of any assistance to any of you or anyone watching this recording, uh, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to share what I know with OER or uh, what I've learned um, about Pressbook so far. So, Would you like to pa uh, paste your email in the chat, possibly? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. There we go. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for listening. I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.